All right, guys, we are getting into the next game. It's going to be a PvP. And this is indeed the first best of three, guys. So hype it up. We are going to be getting into FXOL Begast. Going to go up against Type Real. And the map is going to be Taldarim Alter LE. I have created the poll, which means that the overlay is actually going to work. Everything is going well for me today. This is actually getting insane, except I need to swap the players around. Derp, derp, de der, done. Which means everything is going, and we are into the best of threes in today's EU Play M Daily, guys. I am Jarasar. I hope you are all having an absolutely fantastic evening. And boy, do we have a nice best of three to get us started. It's going to be a PvP. So possibly very few drawn out games, but they're going to be incredibly exciting because spawning over here in the bottom left position of Taldari Malta. It's going to be the orange Protoss player. It's going to be none other than Type Real. And over here in the purple corner of the world, the winner of the last game against the GM player Meteor Rain. Beautiful play coming out from him. He has been on an absolute charge the entire tournament, but one of these titans is going to have to fall. It's going to be none other than our purple Protoss FXO Elbegast. All right, guys. Um, Hope everything is going well for you guys in chat. Thank you so much for the compliments. I really do appreciate it. Um, there is unfortunately a downside uh, to my energy casting tonight. I'm not going to be able to do fan games afterwards because I rushed home from uh, the coffee shop where I do a lot of my work earlier today and I basically haven't had dinner yet. So by the time the cast finishes, I'm going to be starving. I'm going to have to cook myself some food. So I apologize that there won't be fan games uh, this evening. However, if you're interested and you like my casting, I'm going to be casting Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday this week. And that's going to mean uh, an awful lot of uh, bonus material for you guys if you like to watch me cast. Because tomorrow and Thursday will indeed be casting days for me as well. So I will be doing, of course, the EU Daily. Lots and lots of sick names coming out here, of course. And uh, we are going to then be scouting. Here we go. Unfortunately, Real is going to be scouting Elbegast last at the moment. So that is not going to be... Uh not going to be too much of a good thing, but I suspect both players don't mind so much. Of course, guys, Taldarim Alta. For those of you who haven't watched on this map before, there is no ramp between the main and the natural. Because there is no ramp between the main and the natural, and there is no defender's advantage, when you're playing one base versus one base, everybody four gates on this map. This is like the four gate map. Um, Belshir Beach is also another one, but you don't actually see four gates as often on Belshir Beach. As you do on Taldari Malta. So I am by default expecting a four gate out from both of these players. I just don't know who's going to be the aggressor and who's going to be the defender at the moment. Uh, and it's all because this ramp is not actually set up to provide a defender's advantage in a PvP. So that's why I'm expecting the four gates. I might be pleasantly surprised, but we will have to wait and see. Still only one gateway over here, and Warp Gate is being chrono boosted out. Let's see when these guys add on their next gateways. Type Real opting to add on his gateways gradually as opposed to all at once when he just has the minerals to do so. He actually does have enough minerals for a third now. Is he going to be putting the third and fourth down at the same time? And there we go, guys. One gate, two gate, three gate, four gate coming out of Elbegas. So we do indeed learn to count with Play MTV. Excellent. <laughs> My voice is like one octave higher than normal. Guys, I just haven't cast in a while. I'm really looking forward to getting back into the swing of things. And it's great to be here this evening. I'm feeling really good, you know? And, uh, guys, we've got a 4-gate on 4-gate coming up. And who's going to be putting down the first forward pile? It looks like it's going to be Type Real. So this could be, uh, potentially devastating for Elbegast if he's unable to defend it. But he doesn't know that the forward pile is going down. He is going to be sending two Stalkers and a Zealot out the front just to do a little bit of scouting. And actually... The forward pylon of Elbegas is forced to be cancelled because these three stalkers were able to pick it off quickly, but he does have another pylon over here. Who is actually going to be the aggressor here? We have got two forward pylons from two different players, and we could actually have ridiculous both attack and defense style multi uh, multitasking coming out of here from both of them. But it looks like Elbegas is determined to be the aggressor here. Will that actually work, though? Uh... Type Real actually putting a pylon in his base just to... Ooh, dear. He's got a pylon inside FXO Elbegast base. If he's able to hold off this all... Uh, not all in. Sorry. If he's able to hold off this four gate at the front, 
He's going to be able just to warp in two Zealots at the back and completely screw up everything Elbogast has to offer. Nice sneaky move there from Type Real. He now has a pylon up inside Elbogast base, but it's not going to matter because Elbogast army is right outside Type Reels and a siege is indeed going forward. We're going to see a composition. Wow, interesting composition. We have a lot more Zealots coming out here from Elbogast, so he's able to tank a lot more damage. But we do have a slight lead in Stalker count coming out from Type Real, warping more Zealots in as defenders, and it looks like he's going to be able to hold this off. He has more Stalkers than Elbogast. He's going to have to run away. Do we actually see any warp? We do. A Zealot warping into the mineral line, and Elbogast forced to warp it in an additional two Zealots. Two more Stalkers also warping in as well, and he's going to be able to scout immediately that, hang on a second, there's a freaking base in my base. And that's going to be a huge problem for Elbogast. As Type Real moving out across the map now. Going to try and consolidate his armies while keeping this pylon alive. If this pylon stays alive while this army gets to the front of the base, Elbogast is going to be in an awful lot of trouble. Because at the end of the day, Type Real is going to be able to reinforce pretty much as fast as Elbogast is. And when he's already in your base, that's a problem. We do now see the pylon getting taken down. But the Stalkers are now in the base. This is going to be a very crucial moment of the game. We need more reinforcements warped in from Type Real if he wants to quickly win this nice micro-ring back from the Blink Stalkers. Able to take out all of those Zealots, and it looks like Stalker on Stalker action is indeed going to commence. Are we going to see some more warp ins from Type Real? He needs reinforcements, and he needs them right this second. And there we go. We have another warp in of Zealots coming in, and it looks like Elbogast is definitely on the back foot now. Actually managing to take out a Stalker there, and it looks like Elbogast has the Stalker advantage now, but... uh. No, these three Zealots are going to be able to do an awful lot. We're going to try and kite them back, but all of these Zealots are also going to die from both sides. So basically, we have reset this into a Zealot on Zealot War. Or a Stalker on Stalker, actually, if I'm going to be factually correct. Type Real now down to 35 supply towards 38. It looks fairly even at the moment. I'm not 100% certain who's going to come out of this on top. This is going to be insane. Two Zealots for each side going to go out in front. In fact, three Zealots now, but four for Elbogast. And he's actually going to get the first Zealot kill, which means that Type Real is going to lose all his Zealots first. That's going to give an advantage to Elbogast, which means... Type Real is going to have to bounce back out of the base, and that means that this pylon not quite going to go down yet. Type Real not willing to let go of the 4 gate, but it looks like the aggression is going to be done for now. This Zealot on such low health, just about managing to get taken out, and three Zealots now going to harass those Stalkers. Guys, this this 4 gate action is absolutely insane. When you get to PvPs like this, there is no... And wow, we have two sentries coming out from Elbogast. Now, he is feeling confident he's able to hold this off. And uh, that's possibly going to signal the end of the aggression. Oh no, losing another Stalker is Type Real, but he's still not willing to let go. More Warpins coming in. We actually have three Zealots. Now, let's take a look at the worker type. It's 24 to 21 in favor of Elbogast, which means Type Real is not going to be able to hold on to this quite as long. Nice force fields going down, and I actually think this is going to signify the end of the aggression for Type Real. There are just too many Stalkers here from Elbogast. Type Real has come back into the base about umpteen times right now, but this is definitely one time he's not going to be able to come back. Getting pushed all the way back to the entrance of the natural before Elbogast is going to be able to come in and once again take out these Zealots. But my goodness, look at this dedication coming out from Type Real. Non-stop warpings of Zealots, but he is running out of cash. Elbogast has more probes than he does. This stock count is way too high now and Type Real needs to seriously back off the aggression. The supply is now 42 to 25. Elbogast ahead, 15 supply and Type Real finally finally, as I breathe and take a sip of water, decides to call off the attack. Damn. Oh my goodness, that was absolutely insane. Woo! Fourgate action, and we are going to be transitioning into Fourgate Blink play coming out from Elbogast. We do have the Twilight Council already on the way. There we go, behind the mineral line, as well as the robotics facility. So we're going to be seeing... An observer pop out here, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to signal... Not really sure what. Possibly blinking to the other side of force fields, because he knows that Type Real has to defend at the moment. Of course, there's no ramp that he has to blink up, but I'm not really sure, actually, how useful the blink's going to be, now that I think about it. This is freaking Taldarim. The only thing he's going to be able to do is blink up into the natural, but once he has to deal with the main, then stuff's going to go down. Type Real is indeed going to try and get back into this game with a natural expansion, but that's going to leave a huge window open for Elbogast to do a massive attack into the front of Type Real's base. If he does it any time before this base is saturated and he gets an awful lot more units up, Type Real is indeed dead. But we have to wait and see. Type Real, in fact, going to be producing another pilot in the back of the third base now from Elbogast. So he's going to try and get a little bit of harassment in when this army moves out. But I'm not 100% sure it's going to be enough. 40 supply to 56 in favor of Elbogast at the moment. Type Real still trying to take his expansion, but he only has a bunch of sentries for defense. And here comes the move out from Elbogast. This is looking pretty serious, guys. Do -do 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 -do. Going to be moving out here. And a steady stream of death 
is indeed going to... Oh, and is he going to see the pylon? He sees the zealot. Takes up the zealot. And yes, we see the pylon. So tight reel not even going to be able to go for any sort of sneaky backdoor shenanigans. We still have one pylon over here. That's going to be that for now. Two stalkers at the watchtower are going to be able to see impending death coming out from Elbegast who is actually only one probe behind despite being a nexus behind. So that extra minerals going into the nexus is actually used up in army. Let's take a look at the army supply, guys. 30 to 29 in favor of Type Real, though. So not doing too bad, but Elbegast is ahead. Sorry, 39 to 18 in favor of Elbegast, but the worker supply is ahead for Type Real. That's what happens when you get the Nexus up. We do have the force fields going down on the ramp, but that's what Blink was for, guys. He just needs to get one unit up there, and the rest of them can Blink up, and unfortunately, this looks like it might be GG. Nice force fields, but watch the Blink. Wait for it. Are we going to see Blink? Blink? No, in fact, he's going to blink micro back instead of blink forward. No, never mind. Here we go. Just a little bit later than I anticipated. And Elbegast is going to be able to take out Type Real here, which means he is going to be going into game two with a 1-0 advantage. GG. We're going to wait for Type Real's map choice to go into game number two, guys. I am Jorasar. Don't forget to follow the PlayM stream on Twitch TV. Click that follow button and follow me on Twitter as well. I am at Twitter. Twitter.com slash Jorasar. We'll be right back with game number two, guys, right after these commercial breaks.